very good evening and welcome to the news live on Channel I. A very good evening to you, I'm Sharifa Tahir. I'm Javed Bongzo, we begin with the headlines. The vote of Ministry of Defence and Urban Development has been approved by majority of 117 votes. The dangerous industries will be confined to investment zones. Coconut prices will come down next month. The relatives of the chief suspect of the Kamburupitiya dual murder in Matra have refused to accept the body of the suspect. The UN Human Rights Commission has accused Syrian president of involvement in war crimes. And now for those and other stories in detail. The Parliament has approved the vote of the Ministries of Defence and Urban Development in Law and Order by a majority of 117 votes. 126 members have voted in favour and only 9 members have voted against. The Tamil National Alliance has voted against. Members of the United National Party, Democratic National Alliance and the Janata Vimukti Perumuna have not been present in the House at the time of voting. Members of all parties in the United People's Freedom Alliance have voted in favour. UPFA parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha said that the Defence Ministry has ensured the freedom of the country to the people. On the other hand, the Ministry also has safeguarded the unitary status and the territorial integrity of the country. He said that all these days the politicians were used to the culture of estates in Colombo. However, this Ministry has taken commendable action to provide decent multi-storied housing schemes to the people who used to live in shanties in the estates of Colombo. The UNP parliamentarian Harin Fernando said that they do not agree 100% to what is said by parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha. He said Colombo is beautiful and the Urban Development Authority has beautified the Colombo city. However, it should be said that there are shortcomings as well in Colombo. The UNP MP Ajit Manapiruma said that while police is saying one thing, the forces are saying something different. He said that the police should work closer with the people. The UPFA MP Dilum Amunugama said when the government was changed that the police officer named Premadasa Udugampala did the officers of the long range unit and the intelligence unit in the vehicle used to transport dogs. Minister Dinesh Kunavadzana said that there is no people's support for the oppositions at present. The opposition was totally defeated by the people because they became totally disgusted with them. He said that when Mangala Samaravira's new friend, the Channel 4 guys, start concocting further imaginary things, the need to support the oppositions will, will get completely lost. The UNP MP Mangala Samaravira told the speaker that they can find out who the enemy is. The UNP MP Sujiva Sira Singha said that they registered their opposition for being bringing in the Channel 4 personnel to the country. He said that they believe the President and the Defense Secretary will protect everything related to the war. The parliamentarian commended the resettlement program and said that there is peace in the north and law and order is in there in the north. He also stated that 75% of the forces are in that area and the security should be relaxed gradually and it cannot be relaxed overnight. Minister Patali Champikaranavaka said that the security forces should not divulge their leadership qualities and efficiency to others. If there are economic, social and other problems in the country and if there are development management problems and solutions should be found for such problems. The International Monetary Fund said that at a time the global economy was subjected to severe crisis situations, Sri Lanka was successful in safeguarding its economic stability. This was stated by the IMF resident representative in Sri Lanka, Koshi Mathai, at a press conference in Colombo today. The four-year term of office of Mr. Koshi Mathai has come to an end. He started his tenure of office as the IMF resident representative of Sri Lanka in 2009. At a media conference held at the Central Bank today, Mr. Mathai explained about the experiences during his tenure of office about Sri Lanka's economy.
we've just had a board meeting, executive board meeting of the IMF in Washington. You see, very quickly the stabilization goal was achieved. There was market turbulence in global markets uh, earlier this year, and all emerging markets were affected by it. Sri Lanka did relatively well. It wasn't affected too badly. It managed to come out from that turbulence. Uh, GDP growth has been solid. It has been quite strong. But at the same time, we see areas of concern. So overall, we see growth that is still very respectable, 6.5%. It's quite a good figure compared to what other countries are facing. Uh, in terms of inflation, inflation pressures seem not to be there right now. Inflation, we're forecasting to come down by the end of the year to 7%. In terms of the fiscal position, we see continued progress in bringing the deficit down, coming down to 5.8% of GDP, the deficit this year, um, and then for next year, targeting 5.2%. Now, of course, here, there's an important point to make, which is that revenues have been weak, as we all know. Revenues have been weak, and the government has sought to maintain their momentum towards reducing deficits by controlling expenditures which is admirable, it's commendable, but at the same time there's a large priority on keeping capital expenditures up. So if we think about the budget, it came out recently, there was a whole series of uh, post-budget forums and a lot of discussion in the press, some of which we contributed to. Uh, our overall view on that budget was quite positive, as I think many observers' views uh, were also positive. Continuing with more local stories, the Board of Investment has given approval for 118 projects from January to September this year. The estimated investment from these projects amounts to 1,939 million US dollars. These projects will generate 21,000 new employment opportunities. The Ministry of Investment Promotion has introduced 50 sectors for foreign investment. These include tourism and leisure activities, universities and training institutions, agriculture and fisheries services related to ports and health services. The foreign direct investment received by Sri Lanka from 1978 to 2013 amounted to 9,397 million US dollars. 70% of this amount has been received in the period from 2006 to 2013. The foreign direct investments received from 2013 January up to September amounts to 870 million US dollars. This is a 41% increase compared to the same period last year. Steps have also been taken to establish investment zones expeditiously in the northern and eastern provinces as well. Minister of Investment Promotion Lakshman Yapa Apewardana addressing a media conference in Colombo this morning said that the investment zones that have been established at Suryavava and Mirijavila in Hambantata will be further expanded. The Board of Investment Projects have generated 10,000 employment opportunities this year and it has been planned to generate another 10,000 employment opportunities next year. The minister said that in future, no permission will be given for the establishment of dangerous type of industries outside the investment zones. The Coconut Development and Estate Development Ministry said that the coconut prices which have gone up at present will come down in the month of January. The drought experience during the last seven months and several other reasons have contributed to the increase in the price of coconut. The government has taken several steps under the Kapruga Puravara program to increase the local coconut production. At present, the price of a unit of a nut of coconut has increased to 45 to 60 rupees. Increase of coconut oil production, large profit making by intermediaries, more than 100,000 coconut trees getting destroyed by the drought have mainly contributed to the increase in coconut prices. The consumers inform that they are facing difficulties due to the increase in the price of a coconut. Consumers said that coconut prices are very high at present. Meanwhile, the traders said that the sale of coconut is very low at present. Some other consumers said that the price of a coconut is between 50 to 60 rupees, but as it is essential for making food items, they are forced to purchase it at any price. Mr. Jagat Pushpakumar said that due to the favorable weather situation prevailing at present, a record coconut harvest could be obtained by next January. Mr. Jagat Pushpakumar said that from the first half of this year, there was good rainfall and the number of rainy days increased. He said that it has been estimated that by the beginning of January next year, up to the end of December, a record harvest of coconut could be obtained. 
The minister said plans have been made to increase the harvest of coconut during the next five years by increasing the acreage and targeting to export coconut from this country. He said that several steps have been taken to achieve these targets. As an incentive to develop the coconut industry, the government has restricted the import of coconut oil and palm oil. The new budget has proposed to waive the national development tax for the coconut oil industry for three years. The government has been able to increase coconut production from 2,317 million nuts in 2010 to 2,378 million nuts by 2012. The fertilizer subsidy provided by the government for the coconut industry has also contributed for the increasing coconut production. Under an expeditious program, 9 million coconut saplings are being planted annually. The government has started to increase the coconut production to 3,650 million nuts by the year 2016. Under the Divinaguma program, selected families in all divisional secretary divisions are being provided with coconut saplings free of charge. It has also been planned to plant coconuts in 20,000 acres annually to replace the coconut trees that have been removed for various reasons. Under the current programs, it has been planned to cultivate 32 million coconut saplings by the year 2016. The relatives of the chief suspect involved in the murder of a police constable and his wife in Kamarapitiya Matara have refused to take home the body of the suspect. He died this morning in a scuffle against the special task force personnel. Although the mother of the suspect has visited the hospital at the time of the post-mortem, she has not accepted the body. Our correspondent informed that a house has been set fire by some people this evening. The police constable, Valigamaliyanar Archige Sunil, attached to the Crime Prevention Division of Mathura and his wife were murdered at Mamusmulla area in Kambarapitiya recently. The main suspect in these murders was a person named Katyam Chintaka alias Chintaka Vasanta. Another three persons connected to this murder case died earlier on two occasions by police shooting. On receiving information that the main suspect, Chintaka Vasanta, was hiding in a forest in the Naigala area of Kambarapitiya, the special task force of the police launched a special operation last night. During this time, the suspect has hurled a hand bomb at the police officers. Taking quick action, the police officers have shot at the direction the hand bomb was thrown at them. By this shooting, the suspect has died. Two police constables injured from this incident have been admitted to the General Hospital of Mathara. The police media spokesman, Senior Police Superintendent Ajit Rohan, told the media conference in Colombo today that people's support is expected in the future as well to apprehend criminals. The police media spokesman, senior police superintendent Ajit Rohan has said that the main suspect of the murder of the police officer has planned the murder with three other persons and one of them was an army deserter. They are planned to murder the police officer and his wife and the children but the children got escaped. Still on local news, today is the International Day of the Disabled Persons. The theme this year is Break Barriers and Open Doors for an Inclusive Society for All. There are several reasons for people becoming disabled. Road accidents take prominence in this connection. In addition to this, diabetes and strokes also contribute for people becoming disabled. Domestic accidents and autism also contribute for this disease. In the year 1991, the number of disabled persons in Sri Lanka amounted to six persons in every 100,000. The Minister of Health said that at present, nearly 3,700 children are born annually with autism. As per the statistics of 2011, there are about 20,000 children suffering from autism. The unequal development of the brain contributes to autism. The medical professionals point out that proper treatment could cure these children. At present, the population growth has also contributed to the increase in the number of disabled persons. Minister Felix Pereira, issuing a special statement on the International Day of Disabled Persons, has said that by implementing Mahinda Chintana policies, it became possible to shatter the negative attitude people had towards the disabled and to provide them an equal status in society. A function to commemorate the International Day for the Disabled was held in Monragal today. It was jointly organized by the Minister of Social Services and the Uwa Provincial Council. A foot walk from the Mahanam Vidya Junction of Monragala up to the Monragal Library was held with the participation of disabled persons as well. Speaker Chama Rajapaksa and the Chief Minister of the Uwa Province, Sashin the Rajapaksa, also joined the foot walk. A person who has listening difficulties has introduced a special video program prepared with sign languages to the Immigration and Immigration Department website for obtaining a passport. The function in this connection was held today under the chairmanship of the Controller General of Immigration and Immigration, Chula Nanda Pereira. 
A special program with the participation of disabled students studying at the Colombo University was held at the Arts Faculty today. The American Ambassador in Sri Lanka, Mrs. Michelle Sihan, was the chief guest. The American Ambassador donated 2.6 million rupees for establishing a resource center for the disabled children of the university. These funds will be used for the purchase of computers, software, braille machines and other items required by the disabled students. The Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Prema Kumar De Silva, and the Dean of the Arts Faculty, Professor Atul Ranasinghe, also attended the occasion. Continuing with more local stories, payment of compensation for cultivation losses in the Yala season due to natural disasters has started. A function in this connection was held today at the Ministry of Economic Development under the patronage of Minister Basil Rajapaksha. The government has established a compensation scheme under the National Insurance Fund to pay compensation for unexpected damages caused for cultivation by drought, floods and for damages caused by wild elephants and other factors. Farmers who obtain fertilizer subsidy under the Ketheta Aruna fertilizer program covered by the 2013 budget proposals are entitled for this compensation. It is being coordinated with 557 agrarian services centers throughout the country. The ministries of agriculture and wildlife assist in this program. 528 farmers have become entitled for compensation payments. Minister Basil Rajapaksha said it has been in intended to provide this compensation to other cultivations as well in the future. Ministers S.M. Chandrasena and Vijit Vijay Munisoisa also attended the function. The Consumer Services Authority has discovered a consignment of green gram and black gram unsuitable for human consumption from a food processing center in Grand Pass. The raid has been carried out following a tip-off received by them. The consignment included 5,000 kilograms of green gram and 3,000 kilograms of black grams imported from India. The value of the consignment exceeds 1 million rupees. At the time of the red green gram which had been eaten by insects were being prepared to be released to the market as green gram dal. The Minister of Cooperatives and Internal Trade has instructed the Chairman of the Consumer Services Authority to be continuously alert about the traders who are releasing food items unsuitable for human consumption to the market. The Maha Abhimani 2013 Award Festival will be held on the 5th of this month at the Sukhthadasa Indoor Stadium in Colombo under the patronage of President Mahindra Rajapaksha. The persons involved in the construction sector who have displayed special aptitudes will be rewarded at this function. The Mahabhimani 2013 Award Festival has been jointly organized by the Sri Lanka National Construction Association and the Construction Development Institution. This function will be held in conjunction with the National Construction Week. Three declarations formulated by the Construction and Development Institution were released in Colombo today. Minister Vimal Veeravansa was the chief guest at the function held in this connection. The selection of experts of the construction sector of the southern province was held at a function held recently in Gaul. Construction technologists under various sectors received awards and certificates at this function in which the chief guest was the Chief Minister of Southern Province, Chan Vijaylal de Silva. And we now move on to sports news and to bring you the latest from the world of sports, we have with us Chamindi Samansekar. Over to you Chamindi. Thank you Sharifa. Here's the latest on sports. Sri Lanka has acquired a significant victory against the American team in the Nation Cup netball tournament played in Singapore yesterday. As per the international grading, America is in the 19th position and Sri Lanka is in the 23rd position. With the defeat of the American team in the tournament, Sri Lanka has been able to increase the status of its grading. At the first quarter of yesterday's match, Sri Lanka was leading by 14 to 10. In the second quarter, Sri Lanka was ahead by 21 to 10. In the third quarter, by 15 to 10. And in the fourth quarter, by 17 to 7. At the end of the match, Sri Lanka led the score by 67 to 30, 37 and acquired a significant victory by defeating the American team.
And now for a quick look at the weather before we go. The Met Department informed that the turbulent situation around the country has transformed into a low-pressure region and is centered near the eastern coast. The department said that due to the situation, rain and strong winds could be experienced in the eastern slopes of the central hills and in the sea areas around the country. Heavy rains or thunder showers could be experienced tomorrow in the northeast over and north-central provinces and in the districts of Matale and Hambantota. Thunder showers will develop in other parts of the country in the evening or in the nights. There could be strong winds in these areas as well. A summary of the news you've been watching. The vote of the Ministry of Defence and Urban Development has been approved. The dangerous industries will be confined to investment zones. Coconut prices will come down next month. The relatives of the chief suspect of the Kamrupitiya Dua murder in Matra have refused to accept the body of the suspect. The UN Human Rights Commission has accused Syrian president of involvement in war crimes. Well, that's it for tonight's news. Do watch us tomorrow at the very same time. Good night. Good night.